I was a fairly new Christian when one day I was looking for some materials for my two boys to, to read, comic books. And I went into a store to buy some comic books and I discovered that the comics had changed rather radically since I'd been a child. Children were being introduced to super beings, super heroes that had super powers. And many of these creatures were extremely grotesque and ugly. In fact, they were hybrids, part animal, part human. There's a common theme, and that theme is supernatural beings from extraterrestrial sources with supernatural powers. And when you examine these powers, well, really, they are totally out of the realm of the occult and witchcraft. But there's an incredible fascination with them. Even games, role-playing games, where young people participate, practicing spells, playing the roles of demons. And then, of course, there's the New Age. Many methods, therapies, which are really nothing more than Eastern metaphysical beliefs are introduced into society, even to children. So what is going on in our society? Why are people so obsessed with these super beings, the Hollywood films. Many of them, as we look back through the past few decades, have been focused on this same topic. Then, of course, there's the popular series of books and Harry Potter. And very clearly, as you look through these books, you see, again, these supernatural entities and occultic powers. Popular Films like Lord of the Rings. Well, some people say you can even use these films to promote Christianity. But in the films, we see often very clear representations of demonic creatures and the powers of wizards and witches. This interest is global, whether it be in Japan or China or Russia or South America. The same kinds of materials have been translated, and the same interest amongst the children. You see, throughout history, it is apparent since the fall of man that this planet has been the battleground of the universe. Is there any connection? Now, I want to show you this photograph. This is a tattoo, and it's on the back of a man. I want to read to you the description. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. And of course, there are people who say, well, you see, the tattoo artist read these verses. Well, I would like to believe that. And there are many of these, well, you can see them, dragon-like creatures. They have riders on their backs. They're breathing fire and destruction upon the earth. And they're obvious in terms of their supernatural abilities. And there's something common about them all. The toys have these kinds of creatures. And then we have, well, we've already looked at it, the popular Harry Potter series. The same kinds of entities appear. And I've asked a number of people who've been involved in putting these artist representations together where they got the inspiration. And I have been told, sometimes it comes through practice of Eastern religion, yoga, and meditation. They start to get these concepts that come to their minds, and others have said, well, they were on hallucinogenic drugs. So the tattoo, you see, it's not unique. There are many people getting these visions. But I think it can be documented that something is taking place in our world as society is being prepared. And there's this time coming, the Bible says, when our world will be judged in a great global catastrophe, series of events that take place during the tribulation. So how is this preparation occurring? Here's one of the first things that came to my attention. It was an advertisement for a number of posters in a comic book called Creature Creations. Meet the funniest, craziest, most gruesome family of creatures to arrive from outer space. There's some rather weird-looking creatures, but the interesting thing here is the company that's advertising these posters and its symbol, which is the all-seeing eye, which everyone knows has something to do with 
the occult. Here's a collection of some of the superheroes, the toys in the 80s and the 90s. And you'll note hybrid creatures, part animal, part human, supernatural powers and abilities. Here's an Incredible Hulk comic book. And on the front cover, you'll see a number of these weird creatures. Here on this page, I'll show you some of the depictions. That's a elephant human. And that's a horse human. And that is the bull human. And then there's the bird human. And the fish human. All of these I've already showed you are some of the gods of the ancients. As well, a goat human, like the god Pan. This is probably the first major Hollywood film that caught people's attention. E.T., the extraterrestrial. As Ted Koppel says, it answers the question that we're all asking. Is there something out there? Not only is there life in outer space, but the movie tells it is more, listen, highly evolved than we are. You see, there's all kinds of people who embrace the idea that there are beings that may exist out there that are on another dimension because they're more highly evolved. Star Wars. Well... When this film was popular back in the 80s, I actually used to show this slide first, and the children begin to yell, Darth Vader! But it's the Norse god, Odin. Here's the young man went to a movie, he said five times, he said, I wish I had a friend like Yoda to teach me how to use the Force. That's like saying, I wish I had a friend to teach me how to practice witchcraft. Here's a series of games and toys, superpowers, sectors, galaxy warriors, Check out the toy stores, and you will find that this is what's going on. And if it isn't in the toy stores, well, then check out the video games. The same kinds of things. As many young people are obsessed with these games that introduce them to this whole spiritual dimension. This book was being advertised at a Christian book table. The Gospel According to Harry Potter, a wonderful rebuttal for those who see something sinister in this children's classic, says Tony Campola. And the author of this book says, you can use Harry Potter to teach people about the gospel. But my question is, how can you use witchcraft to teach people about the gospel when the Bible says witchcraft is an abomination to God? Well, I'm going to read to you, we have a few minutes, just a short portion of one of the radio transcripts on Harry Potter, and then you can decide. For years, I've been following the rising interest in the supernatural and how Satan has been seducing our generation. When the Harry Potter phenomenon hit, it was just another example. Being occupied with other research, I placed Harry Potter on the shelf. But now this has changed. Harry Potter is extremely dangerous and people must be warned. This is why. While it has been claimed Joanne Rowling chose the name Potter because she had friends with this name when she was a little girl, I'm convinced there's good reason to be suspicious. An interview with Miss Rowling posted on the internet provides some interesting information. When asked what influenced her to come up with the characters, Rowling responded, The classics part of my degree at Executor College did furnish me with a lot of good names for characters. After reading her statement, I was reminded of a book I found at the university campus titled The Women's Encyclopedia of Myths and Secrets. As I was flipping through the book, I discovered a section titled Potter. This is what I read. The Sumerian Babylonian goddess Aruru, the Great, was the original potter who created human beings out of clay. She made man in the image of God and infused him with the breath of heaven, which brought him to life. Aruru was also Ishtar, Anana, Ninhursag, Mami, Mama, or Mamutu. She made the first man, Adam, out of clay. And I continue. The mother creator goddess who emerged at Babylon was worshipped in other places. The Greeks called her Astarte and equated her with the love goddess Aphrodite. She is mentioned frequently in the Old Testament as the revival of the God of the Jews, as Ashtaroth, also known as the Queen of Heaven. In India, Kalima was the same goddess who called Kalmarie or the pot goddess. 
By the way, I'm concerned about people when they're obsessed by the queen of heaven today. Many call this queen of heaven Mary, the mother of Jesus. The Bible says the queen of heaven is a demon. Science fiction portrays creatures today, well, they're really not new. Same kinds of creatures that were in the minds of human beings in the past, like the Assyrians and the Greeks. And by the way, today through genetic engineering, there's a potential for this to happen. Hybrids, part human, part animal. And these scientists are saying that someday maybe we will meet our cosmic cousins. They may look like this. Part bat, part human. Or part dolphin and part human. You see, people like Sagan took this seriously. Notice what he says on page 179 of his book, The Cosmic Connection. It is not a question of whether we are emotionally prepared in the long run to confront a message from the stars. It is whether we can develop a sense that beings with quite different Evolutionary histories, beings who may look far different from us, even monstrous, may nevertheless be worthy of friendship and reverence and brotherhood and trust. You see, without the concept of evolution, no one would conceive of the idea that these so-called beings with supernatural powers, weird-looking configurations, well, he calls them monstrous, could exist. But science that believes in evolution has made it possible. Robert Jastrow said, I believe that man and earth are not unique in the universe. He says, life that is a billion years beyond us, maybe far beyond the flesh and blood form that we would recognize, old-fashioned people would call spirits. Well, that's what the Bible calls them. And they exist. And the Bible says they have a plan. And their plan is to interfere in the affairs of man. And it seems like we're being prepared. First contact. The search for extraterrestrial intelligence. A series of articles by some well-known science writers. Or those who claim that they've already made contact. Like Whitley Stryber. Communion. A true story. Or cults that are focused around UFOs. The message given to me by extraterrestrials, Claude Borillion, Ariel, and this is everywhere, including Russia. Fascination with the possibility that someday soon the extraterrestrials will arrive. Now the question. It's the same question that was asked on the front cover of the Discover magazine, is anyone out there? And the answer to the question, based on the creation model, is yes. There is an unholy dimension that exists, and the Bible forbids that man makes contact. There is one way to contact God, and that's through the mediator, Jesus Christ. No other way. 